In 1988 and 1989, UP Visayas-based anthropologist Dr. Alicia Magos had a chance to explore the mountains of central Panay for 10 days. With a group of NCIP Region 6 field personnel taking the eastern route to central Panay with interior tapas copies as the target. Two years later, in 1991 and 1992, she organized her own group composed of UPV Iloilo research assistants, Ana Reza Limoso and Judith Pabito, along with a Hollywood youth, Ricardo Camarig, serving as the guide. In her journey to the heartland of Panay, various agencies facilitated funding support recognizing that there is a dearth of information in this area of research. The purpose of that trip was to see more of the Panayanon and Halawudnon barangays. She as well verified the presence and distribution of epic chanting in these areas. It was during that trek that she was able to see an 84-year-old kept maiden as well as women chanters who were sisters or close relatives of a Binukot. She also learned that the people inhabiting the interior mountains of the Pasca Peace and Kalinog Iloilo are descendants of mountain people of interior Panay, previously called by various names, Montes by Eugenio, Mundos by Yaldama, and Sulod by Hukano. She theorized that their origin was once the coast before the colonizers came in but moved to the far mountains following the course of two major rivers, Halawud and Panay rivers. Dr. Magos also explored central Panay in the early 1990s to clarify and strongly establish the IP identity of Panay Bukidnon and thereby clarifying their ethnic name. All mountain dwellers in central Panay, covering the four provinces, are Panay Bukidnon. The use of the names Halawudnon, Panayanon, Akyanon, and Irainon are names referring to their source of sustenance, the Halawud and Panay River, respectively. Living in Minoro or groups of houses, these villagers must have come from the sea coast but moved to the interior and near water bodies, the rivers and creeks. A Bukidnan house is usually a one-room affair that is elevated from the ground by bamboo poles and is made of bamboo and nipa or kugon. 
A common fixture in their household is a duyan and a lusong where they pound the rice. Other tools and materials that you can find inside their houses are the following. Sanduko, a long black knife for cutting. Lusong and halo, a mortar and pestle for pounding rice. Tagad, a bamboo or wood sharpened at the end for digging holes. Dawin, a small wooden basket tied to one's waist containing rice seeds. Tabungos is a big woven container made of bamboo strips for containing cavans of rice. And Iwa, a bolo. Maya. Nanaga uma uma kuno say amang sinang mga harayan han. It is from the Kalupaan, or land, the mountains, hills, and patches of land where they farm and get the Visayan varieties of rice such as Bisaya and Malido. While working on the farm, there were songs being sung to entertain themselves. Their lives in the mountains focused around tilling the land and searching the environment for their sustenance. Kainin farming is a common activity. They also make charcoal that they sell to the lowlands. The Bukidnon spend hours of trekking through a rugged trail and rivers carrying their products to the nearby market by means of a short bamboo pole called Tuang Tuangan. This balances whatever it is that they are transporting in their bodies and makes the baggage bearable. They also plant coffee, abaca, gabi, palawan, and other root crops. Root crops are staples during lean months when rice is not available. Weaving is a common activity for the Bukidnon because of the availability of bamboo and rattan. Products from these are used in their everyday chores and are sold to augment their needs. It is in the Catalunan or forest where they trap wild animals using balatik, limbaong, and ligpit. They place traps for wild animals such as lagid, wild boars, and deers. A limbaong is a hole big enough to trap the animal with sharp pointed bamboo sticks or luba and covered on top with leaves. Siod or baghot is a hanging rope serving as trap set on a branch of a sloping area. The tiglapak, a curved branch, tigpi, set under a tree and once the safety is released, the pig's legs is caught. The luba, also a trap, works when a wild boar jumps on it and if it is hit by a pointed stick, the farmer or hunter traces the blood to locate it. It is in the katubigan or water bodies such as rivers, waters, springs, and streams where they get food also by chopping fish and freshwater shrimps. Bukidnon children also make the waterfalls as their playing ground. Pang Unog is a method of catching indigenous little fishes in the river called Unog by using a cloth tied on the neck. Some traditional techniques used for gathering food are the following. Padugmon, where branches of trees are placed on one part of the river for water to flow and allow fishes and crustaceans to come in. Taon, a fish trap, or a woven bamboo trap, is set against the flow of the river current to allow fish to come. Binaugon, a fish trap with a bait, paon inside it, is similar to a taon. Patahan is a huge bamboo trap set on the intersection of the river wherein two sides of the flowing water goes to the trap. Diving down the deep part of the river armed with a baslai, pointed iwa or lance using a lente to protect the eyes and see clearly through the water the big fishes and freshwater shrimps. Pasulo or padamag are catching fishes 
crabs and crustaceans in the early evening by using a torch to attract these fishes and crustaceans. Respect to the spirit beings inhabiting the forests, the rivers, and the land prevails in the Bukidnon Saik. Despite having missionaries coming from the lowland and western medicines reaching the Bukidnons, they are still strongly attached to the Babaylanes and the Maaram that offer cure and provides advice. After a day's work, Panay Bukidnon would listen to the elder members of the family who would sing Sugidanon. These are epics that tell the exploits of the mythical characters of Humadapnon, Labaudungun, Malitungyawa, and others. Epics are sang or chanted long stories, handed down mostly by cap maidens or binukot. The epic chants give lessons and shows the worldview and social structure of the epic people, the ancestors of the Panay Bukidnon. It also serves as lullabies for children and as entertainment. Its theme are mostly about romance and adventure. Hungaw, the traditional wedding, figures in the lives of the Bukidnon as it is a time for feast and celebration. People come to join the celebration and enjoy the repartee of the bride and groom's parents. Federico Caballero to Uhan was awarded the Gamaba or the National Living Treasure by the National Commission for Culture and the Arts in the year 2000 for epic literature. This is for his mastery of the ten epics or Sugidanon. Sugidanon comes from the term Sugid to tell or narrate. He comes from a family of at least five generations of epic chanters. His great-grandparents are mostly chanters or Manug Sugidanon, Babaylan or shamans, and Manug Husay, arbiters. This is from the lineage of Angoy Upin to Anguran, who is Lula Sosa. His siblings are also good epic chanters, Paino, Polding, Amang Baoy or Mulok, Ulan, Rudolfo, and Tarsing, Abiaran. Good chanters come from the family with a Binukot lineage. Binukot is a maiden jealously hidden from the eyes of men and commands a high bride gift. At the early age of four or five, or even before the girl is born, the child is already pledged for marriage to a young boy as agreed by the parents. This is sealed by a tuos, a precious material or gift to seal the agreement.